Welcome to the high bay in our San Francisco HQ where we're doing our final tests on Arcturus before we send it to Cape Canaveral for launch. Let's check in with some of the team that is working on this and making it ready for space. So when I was editing this, I realized that this is our first vlog and you probably have no idea what Arcturus is. If you don't know who we are, check out this video. And if you don't know what Arcturus is, keep watching. If you're super smart and you know everything, skip to the next chapter. So Arcturus is our very first satellite and it took us almost five years to build. Now we're building way more, but Arcturus was our very first, our, our baby, our pride and joy. And Arcturus was made specifically for our customer Pacific Data Port to be a part of the Aurora system, which will provide dedicated internet access for Alaska. In our next vlog, we're actually flying to Alaska to introduce you to some Alaskans who don't have the best internet and are very excited for Arcturus to go into space over 22,000 miles away from us and provide them with internet. So without further ado, uh, back to the vlog. Testing is really important because when something breaks in space, we can't send someone up there to fix it. So it's really critical for us to understand how everything is going to work and that everything is going to work while it's down here on the ground. That means that we test both the structures of the vehicle, how does it hold together. We test all the electronics. Do they work when you plug them in together? Do they work with the software? We test the whole integrated assembly, like anything that is going to deploy, is going to spread out in space. My name is Emerson. I'm on the uh, mechanical integration team. Also, if you want to see the family of raccoons, they're right outside. The Astronus mascots. They need to be featured in some of these videos. I just saw them in the background. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure that Arcturus is going to work properly in space um, and everything's going to deploy. We are rolling it out of storage to do an inspection, uh, mini deployment test. We really want to make sure that that works because we only get one shot at those things. So testing deployments like the solar array, whether that opens properly, or testing deployments like the light band, which is what separates us from the rocket, um, is very important for us to know that those are gonna work right, and so that's why we test them. For the solar rays, we decided to deploy them because they've been stowed since we finished five testing in February. Ideally, we would have launched a long time ago, but we're waiting for, we're waiting for our ride to orbit. The launch got delayed, and so we had to wait for longer than we expected. Because of that, we wanted to check and make sure that the interfaces between different parts of the solar array when the panels are stowed would open up properly when we're on orbit. Those interfaces are specially designed to be very likely to come apart. That's the only thing that they have to do, right? They have to hold it together when we don't want it to come apart, and then they have to separate when we do want it to come apart. So when you don't have air in space, you form an environment where two metals that are the same type of metal, if you push them together, especially if they're very clean in that vacuum environment, they can actually weld together and stick together without any heat, just due to the fact that they're the same type of material. Now that doesn't happen on Earth, but in vacuum that can happen. And so you really don't want those similar materials in contact. So you, we use dissimilar materials and lubricants that prevent that type of, of sticking together. However, one problem with dissimilar materials in the right types of non-space environments, you can actually have what we call galvanic corrosion. So we redeployed because we we're uncertain about some corrosion risks. Some of these interfaces that hold different things to the satellite, they're very tightly compressed. And when you tightly compress different materials together, you can sometimes experience corrosion. If that happens, and if too much of it happens, that can be another thing that could cause things to stick together. And that's actually caused failures in other space programs in history. It was not something that we thought was like highly likely. We just couldn't 100% say, like. No, there's no likelihood of this. And in order to mitigate that risk, we decided it was, it was best to open up those interfaces and actually inspect for any corrosion. So we're about to lift out of the shipping container um, and onto the breakover fixture. Which is the fixture that we built our terrace on. We basically loosen the clamps in the base of the shipping container. We bump it up slowly to make sure everything's picking up level. And then once we clear the ring, then we continue lifting it straight up. Uh, we don't like flying the satellite around, so we wheel the shipping container out from under it, and then we wheel the breakover under it and attach it. I mean, like, we've done it a bunch of times, so it's not new, but it's never, like, we don't treat it like it's like an easy process because it's still lifting the vehicle, just like one of a kind. 
Once it was on there, then we rolled it up to our solar deployment rig. So we deployed both arrays today, just kind of to this like half deployment state. And on that rig, uh, we're able to off-weight the solar arrays uh, since we are in 1G and they're designed to operate in 0G. Um, so we can safely off-weight them and do a manual deployment on those in order to inspect all of the interfaces that have been in storage very tightly stowed. Um, we inspected all the mating services, saw nothing out of the ordinary. We're really happy that everything deployed on its own. Yeah, or sure is fast. After we stowed the arrays um, today or tomorrow, uh, we're not going to deploy those arrays again until it's in space. I think everybody's pretty excited to get another chance to see Arcturus, though. the spacecraft on a rocket, we attach it to the rocket with a separation system, right? Because we don't want it to be stuck to the rocket for the whole time. These are challenging things to do because it has to be very stiff and strong so that when that rocket launch puts lots of loads and shaking into the vehicle, into the spacecraft, that they don't break apart. But then when you send it a signal and you want them to break apart, it needs to happen cleanly, quickly, and without snagging things together. So the light band is our separation mechanism um, for our Arcturus. So this is our Arcturus test weight. It's roughly the same mass in CG as Arcturus. And the way it works is it has a uh, two rings, one on the spacecraft and one on the launch vehicle. And you put those rings together and then there are a bunch of little clips that sort of hold on from one to the other. So we're getting ready to put the light band on our actual satellite here and then we'll ship on it. So we were just doing a test make because it's a pretty complicated procedure. Bringing the two halves together, slowly compressing it down, compressing it evenly with like a series of, they're called compression tools, which are just like bearings with zip ties, which is really odd. But we basically bring it down until it's at the right compression. So later today, we'll like, or tomorrow, we'll finish the full operation of, we'll pick, the, pick this up. Um, and we'll deploy the light band down to some foam. Three, two, one. When we get to the launch site, we'll arm it, which is basically readying it to deploy. Um, and then SpaceX, when we're at the right, we're basically dropped off at our orbit. Um, they'll send the signal to deploy it, and the two halves will separate. And half of it stays with the launch vehicle, half of it stays on Arcturus for the rest of its life. But yeah, the actual operation of stowing it is pretty tricky. So being able to do it here and not at the launch site when we're on like a strict timeline is a huge relief to all of us. It's also designed with redundancy in it. If any one part of it fails, other things can, can work and the whole thing works together. Because when we have these critical systems where if one thing fails, then the entire system doesn't work, uh, we usually add some type of redundancy for that. So now that the tests are pretty much done for our tourists, it's going to get boxed up, shipped to Cape Canaveral, where it'll wait launch and then go up on a Falcon Heavy, be sent 22,000 miles into space. It's our first official step in connecting part of the 4 billion people that don't have internet. Uh, it's going to take a long time to get there, but we're going to make it happen one satellite at a time and tell that story as it happens.